Hey guys, I'm going to show you in this video how I went about my first time making oil tanned fish leather. At the end of the video there will be a short section describing what I learned and I will show how to skin a whole fish, uh, descale it, scrape, tan, and stretch the leather. Uh, to start with, this is a list of things you'll need. Uh, pause the video here and write this down or take a screenshot. And this is some fish anatomy that you'll need to know. Uh, this diagram shows where the cuts will be made and what's being taken off. So we're going to start with the dorsal fin. Um, make a shallow cut at about 45 degrees right underneath it. Once you have it freed the whole way around, you can reach in and pull it out. After the dorsal fin, uh, we'll flip the fish around and we'll move on to the pelvic fins. And so you're just going to make a cut in kind of parallel with the belly behind the fins, maybe about an inch forward. You don't need to remove those. After that, we will remove the anal fins in the same manner that you removed the dorsal fin. Try to make these cuts as clean as possible. This is why a really sharp knife is important. Um, if you make really rough, jagged cuts, you may end up losing some of the skin that you want to turn into leather. Next, we will make an incision the whole way around the tail. If you wanted to, you could also just chop the tail off here. Um, this is the method that, this is how I learned to do it uh, from watching some other guys up at the fish farm and so I'm just following their method kind of to a T. So after we have the tail incision made then we're going to go the whole way around the head. So you start from right behind the skull and follow the line of the gills down and you just want a shallow incision here. Um, I actually cut too deep on the one side and you'll see why that's not a good idea. Uh, once you bring those down on the sides then you want to cut forward at an angle um, to right underneath the chin and that's actually going to leave a kind of triangle shaped cut on the bottom of the fish and the reason for that is that that's where you're going to uh, start taking the skin back and so it provides a nice little flap that you can open up very easily so after you have that line connected the whole way around you want to stick the knife in with the blade parallel to the belly of the fish and free that little triangle right there. Once that's freed and folded back a bit, put the knife down and then work in a thumb or a finger on the belly right at the base of that triangle and separate the skin from the flesh. And then what you're going to do is work your fingers the whole way around the fish and free that skin up maybe an inch or two back. And as you're doing that, you can start to turn it inside out, um, kind of like turning a sock inside out and then pulling it off of your own foot. Um, so you need to get the skin freed for an inch or two, turn it inside out, and then you can proceed to pulling the whole skin off in one go. And the reason that I say to use shallow incisions for these cuts is that if you cut too deeply, um, you could end up pulling the head off, and then it's going to be really difficult because there's not much left to grab onto in order to take the skin off. So make sure those cuts are really shallow. So we're almost there. Um, one thing to note is that one of the rags that I'm using is really, it's like an open weave and it's really grippy. Um, I, I don't even know where it came from, um, but if you have something like that, it's going to aid greatly in holding on to the skin because at this point the skin is so slippery, it's difficult to hold on to. So once you have the skin folded back the whole way around the fish, then you can pick up that rag and start to pull the fish off. You want to stick a couple fingers in the gills and hold the head securely and then starting on one side and then moving to the other work the skin back and it's going to come off exactly like a sock or a glove 
flip it over. Right here is where I messed up. Thankfully, we can still hold it. And then just pull. This is going to take a fair amount of strength. And then the whole skin just slides off. Remove the pelvic fin. Turn it right side out again. And you can finish filleting the fish at this point. Uh, hopefully you're planning on cooking with it. And now we need to clean the skin up. So any little bits of meat or anything that are left over from the fins, you want to trim those off. So if you lay the skin flat, you'll be able to feel if there's any lumps. Um, just remove those bits. And once the, once the skin has been trimmed, then we want to open it up. Uh, so I start on the belly here, lay it out flat, and then make a cut that runs right down the center of the belly. And then we do the same for the back. Now at this point, we're going to scale the fish. So we start from the tail end and scrape towards the head using the knife held uh, perpendicular to the cutting board just to scrape the scales off. And after that, we move on to one of the more labor intensive parts. Uh, we have to scrape all of the flesh off the inside of the skin. Um, it pays to take your time here and be really meticulous about it. You need to get every last bit of flesh off of there. Um, and basically as you're scraping, once you stop having all that slime coming off of it and little bits of flesh and everything and the skin itself feels clean uh, that's that's when you're ready to stop so just scrape scrape some more keep working at it until it's as clean as you can possibly get it uh, after that rinse the skins and then we move on to making the tanning solution this is just egg yolks and oil so separate the eggs. I used. Uh, I ended up using four eggs here and um, just a quantity of oil enough to cover the skins in the pan. Uh, I'm just using regular vegetable oil. It's what I had on hand and it's a little bit more stable than something like olive oil. And you could use coconut oil, uh, sunflower oil, you know, whatever. Um, Whisk them together really well so the yolks are kind of emulsified into the oil. And then you want to take each skin and work the oil and egg yolk mixture into the skin and then place that into the pan and do that for each of the skins you have. And then empty the, the rest of the mixture from the bowl into the pan. And then make sure everything is really evenly covered. You want every bit of skin covered in here. And then you just set this aside at room temperature for 24 hours. After 24 hours, we come back and we pull them out and rinse them off um, just under running tap water. Rinse them and really work it with your fingers until it feels completely clean. It should not feel slimy or, or slick in any way. After this, we move on to stretching. So I'm just using the edge of a table here. And we're just going to pull the skin over the corner of the table, um, both directions, both side to side and along the length. And you eventually end up with what looks like this. These are the collagen fibers that are starting to, to work their way loose. Right, so I didn't film the rest of it because it's just a lot of me stretching leather for hours on end. Um, basically, the stage that I was at in, in the video that you last saw, um, I stretched each skin for probably about an hour. Uh, and then I hung it up to dry and overnight, just free hanging. And 
basically when I came down in the morning, um, the skins were really, really stiff. Uh, so I actually ended up having to cut off like around the edges. Uh, I trimmed quite a bit of this one because uh, they were so stiff from not being worked as much. It's really difficult to work the sides, uh, the edges of the skin. And, and so I spent the next day then, uh, probably for another hour or two, uh, working a little bit more oil into the skin and uh, stretching it over the back of a chair, like I said, for another hour or two. And so what we're left with now is basically this it's really it's pretty pliable um it's a little papery still um and also translucent which is difficult to see here because of the light but uh as far as things i learned um basically i guess oil tanning is a more advanced method of uh of tanning fish skin so par for the course for me i jumped into the deep end here uh, the next time I'll try bark tanning and also black tea tanning, um, they lead to a more supple and also stronger skin that's a little bit thicker. Uh, the Using actual tannins, uh, either from bark or tea, helps to bulk up the skin a bit from what I've learned. Um, the oil tanning method, uh, the advantages to that uh, are basically that... Um, you end up with a translucent skin that retains most of the original color, uh, which is really cool. Uh, you don't get that with bark tanning. It just turns the whole skin a uniform color uh, based on whatever the color of the tannins are, uh, the solution that you're using. So something like this would be really suitable for uh, like lampshades or, you know, as like an inlay panel in a knife sheath or something like that. Um, other things I learned, uh, as I said in the video, uh, don't you know, when you're skinning the fish, uh, make sure you don't cut too deeply because uh, the head almost came off as I was pulling the skin off. And that would have made it really difficult to get the rest of the skin off if that had happened. Uh, so make really shallow cuts with a very sharp knife. Um, one of the other big mistakes I made was not using enough tanning liquid. Um, I didn't have enough of an oil and egg yolk mixture. Um, so I could probably have pretty much doubled it next time I do it, uh, because there were some spots that came out, uh, as the skins, like basically when I pulled the skins out of the tray, there were some spots that were already translucent and pretty hard. Um, so from the subsequent working, um, it wasn't an issue, uh, because I worked more oil into those areas and was able to loosen them up, but it did show me that I didn't have enough liquid in the pan to really fully cover and saturate the skins. Um, beyond that, I'm excited to explore these further. Uh, I want to experiment with some different drying methods. Um, I guess one, one method is to leave the skins in the egg and oil mixture for 24 hours-ish, and then take them out and without cleaning them first, hang them on a window just stick them to a window pane in the sun and let them dry there for a week. Uh, the other way you can do it is to wash them, stretch them, and then tack them to a board, let them dry that way, and then like fully dry that way, and, uh, and then work them again after they've been fully dried. And from what I understand, you need to continue stretching them after they come out of the solution, whatever it is that you're using. Uh, until with this method until they feel kind of clammy but almost dry um, and so I don't know how long that actually takes uh, this is the first time I've done it so I can't really think of anything else off the top of my head right now um, as far as other methods that I want to try like I said bark tanning uh, black tea tanning also urine tanning um, all things I want to experiment with uh, just to really explore the different methods and see what uses I can get out of this. As far as uh, what you can do with this, um, obviously clothing, gloves, uh, boots, boot liners, uh, purses, bags, uh, you can make bowls out of it for say serving fruit or something, uh, sheaths for knives, belts, um, all sorts of things. Uh, lampshades as well, which is something I really want to try with this. So we'll have to see, uh, but the possibilities are kind of endless. And pretty much anywhere you would use regular 
regular leather, say cow or deer or whatever, uh, fish leather can be employed as well, uh, taking into account its thickness, of course. Uh, and that's it. So thanks for watching and following along. And uh, I hope that you guys are inspired to try making some of your own if you're interested in it. And I'll be posting updates as I continue exploring this craft. So thanks so much.